gotten a request to show how to calculate the area moment of inertia of a triangle. That sounds like a pretty good video, so let's do that. I've got a triangle with the apex at the origin of the coordinate system here, and I've got uh, height B and width A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to cut this up into slices, calculate the area moment of inertia of each slice, and then just add them up. Okay? So what I'm going to do here uh, by the way, when we start, we've got to know what point about which we're calculating the area moment of inertia. So we're going to calculate the area moment of inertia about the centroid of the triangle, which is one-third of the way up from the top and one-third of the way in from the side. So the, the height right here is B over 3. And now let's do it this way. There we go. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide this thing up into slices, and each slice is going to be just a little rectangle. Okay, so let's blow that up down here. Okay, each one of those slices is going to be a rectangle. Now I know that I'm going to get this little stair step phenomenon up here. Well, when I make those slices small enough, those little stair steps pretty much go away. And we're, you can tell we're headed for calculus here. We're eventually headed for an integral. So let me show you how to set that up. The, this will be slice number n. It doesn't matter what n is, n is just a counter. And so the, the area moment of inertia of that slice is 1 12th bh cubed, right? Well, that's the area moment of inertia of the slice about its centroid, which is in the middle. Well, that's not where I want. I want about uh, b over 3. So what I have to do now is add an a d squared term, where okay, base times height Area is also base times height, so let's just put that in there. D squared. Now, D is the distance between that centroid and that one, so it's going to be H over 2 minus B over 3. Now, let, next thing we need to know is what's the expression for that line right there? Y of X equals MX plus, and I'll call that a capital B so we know it's not that. All right? Well, B is the Y intercept, so B is 0 here. And M is the rise divided by the run. So what I'm going to find out is Y of X, X equals B over A times X. Right? So anytime I see a height, I'm going to put that in because that's height. I want height as a function of X. So let's put this up here. 1 twelfth. I'm going to do it for neatness. I'm going to put H cubed first. So let's see, I've got b over a times x cubed, that's the base, the width, I'm sorry, that's the height, the width here, I've got to call it something, I'm going to call it dx, okay, for right now dx is just a variable, it stands for some really small number. So there's the width, dx, base, time, or, me, base times height cubed, plus, alright, base times height again, so, uh, B over A times X times DX again. Now, D squared, all right? D is the distance. It's 1 half of H minus B over 3. Let me just put the DX at the end here. So that's going to be B over A times X over 2 minus B over 3 squared DX. Let me get this thing out of the way. Okay, so there's A d squared, I'm sorry, a is uh, base times height, times d squared. So there you go. There's the expression for one of these slices here. Well, let's put slices along the entire width of the triangle, and let's add all those slices up. Well, I want those slices to be really small, so adding up really, really small slices, that's integration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one big change here. I total, I'm going to integrate from 0 to A, right, because I'm going to integrate from there to there, right, and I'm going to stuff this expression in here. So let me write this out one more time. 1 12th B over A X cubed DX plus, right, X, there's that. Evaluate that 
and you're going to get the area moment of inertia of a triangle. Now that looks pretty gnarly, but it's not really. This is just a polynomial. Okay, it's a polynomial in x cubed. Um, you can work this out by hand if you want. You can put it in MATLAB or Mathematic or something like that. And when you uh, go through this, you find out that that supposedly complicated looking expression comes out to be that. Okay? I equals 1 over 36 AB cubed, or 1 over 36 base times height cubed. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Now, the one last thing I wanted to show you, <coughs> excuse me, is that this works for any kind of triangle, not just a right triangle. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you graphically how that would work. Let's say I had a triangle that looks like this. Okay? I just figured out how to do this for a right triangle. That's not a right triangle. I could do this two ways. I could break it down into two right triangles and add them up. Or I could try something else. I can cut it into slices this way. If I were to rearrange, just to slide those slices over a little bit, those same slices could be formed into a right triangle. All right? And I, would, I could figure out what that slope was. And since none of the, the heights of none of these uh, slices haven't changed, the area moment of inertia about that point hasn't changed. So I can transform that into that and solve for that if I want to. Like I said, the other way to do this is to start with this triangle, divide it in triangle 1 and triangle 2, find the area moments of inertia of both triangle 1 and triangle 2 and just add them up. So it turns out that even though you get this expression, it's not very hard. The, the final expression is really quite simple. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.